Welcome to Hunterfield Target. This is South Africa and today we're shooting in the Cape region. So this is educational, promotional and fun. Enjoy. Welcome to the gorgeous Cape Town where we will be having a league shoot today. Hunterfield Target is a family sport. We've got a couple of father-son combinations today. We even have a father-daughter combination. Not yet today, but they usually shoot with us. Most of the helpers are out on the field already or in the course, helping our course builder to set up and to prep for everything. So let me take you onto the course itself. The course itself is a very, very interesting course. Wind always plays a role. And I'm going to take you quickly through just a small part of the course. Right, that is Zelda, our course builder for today. She's the mastermind behind everything. We've got our super raker here called Hanku. He's the one clearing the path for us. And then we've got lane number one coming right up here in the corner. Right, that means no entry, don't go past here. Lane number one and our famous course builder right into the sun. And this is basically your shooting positions. And you've got a small little target here at an undisclosed distance. And then to the right, there's another target right on the hill there that we're going to shoot today. And this is the basics of the course. We'll do some more videos as the day progresses. This is an awesome, awesome venue to build courses. It's such a like a family sport. We've got dad and son here. And he's a bloody crack shot that light there. In the course, helping to build. And I've got our intrepid oh, other cameraman that's shy to stand before the camera also working here. Camera. We've got a nice stream here with all the nice rains. Enough water to keep us busy. And in the distance you can hear the hammers pounding in. These are all the markers so if I'm standing at the target and I look back at the course somewhere along there there, 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 about there's a shooting lane. Ah, there we go. There's the shooting lane that the person will be shooting from, and they've very kindly positioned a tree in the way, so you should need to shoot around the tree. The course itself is going to be very, very interesting. Let me take you through this one. So, we've got two targets set up there. I'm standing in the course, which is actually illegal at this stage, but because I'm part of the team, the course building team, I am allowed to stand here. All right, so let me walk you back to the beginning of the course. And this is the shooting peg that we will be shooting off. And we'll be shooting in that direction over there. You've got your strings. So the moment you knock down the target, it's got a kill zone in the middle. The kill zone looks like this. Right, so this is the target that we're aiming for. And what we need to do is you need to shoot your pellet right through this little marker over here the moment you shoot it through that marker the target actually drops down and you've got one of these fancy little strings to pull the target back up again for the next shooter so this is a very small target it's a 15 miller and these is a galvanized or iodized whatever you want to call these targets extremely difficult to see where you miss it makes a small little mark there where you miss but unfortunately you won't be able to see that through your scope today so ladies and gentlemen that is the absolute basics we will be demonstrating the kneeler and the, the positional shots a little bit later but i think the course builders had a heck of a lot of fun if i look at that target way in the front it is half hidden behind a tree or a stump all right so let's quickly explain how that target works this is a resettable target it looks like that it's got a kill zone right through here if you hit it on the face plate the target will not drop if you hit it through the kill zone, you hit the back plate, the target actually falls down and then you've got a string attached to it to put it back up again. And that's how the targets work. So it's a nice interactive, reactive target. It's not paper shooting. So you get immediate response. Did I kill the target or did I drop the target or not? And that's the basics of how the target system works. This is a very small target. This looks like a 20 mil target. The target sizes vary from the 15 miller that you see over here that's another 20 miller over there 
and they go all the way up to 40 millimeter but we don't use a lot of them on the course because the course builders are usually sadistic and they make the course as difficult as possible no just kidding it's part of the plan okay on it yeah Sometimes the creativity of the course builders are just stupendous. Look at this. Shooting down a little ravine, all the way into a stream. And the target is there. A nice little round ball, 35 mole kill zone. Oh, hold still. Tweety Bird. The second target is even more difficult to spot. On an embankment, it's right over there. But what makes this shot even more difficult is if you move a little bit back, you'll see that the shooting pin right up there has got a nice little big teary trunk here. So the right handed shooters are going to battle with this one, getting into a comfortable shooting position. This is all part of HFT and what makes this such a beautiful beautiful sport look at that thanks to all the helpers we got the course built in record time and we're off to the site in range before you can go to the site in range you need to sign the indemnity form and then you are good to go so these are the guys just sighting in their rifles checking what the mildos will be at what distance remember you can't adjust your scope this is the man to watch all the way from Ireland, shooting for Team England today. And he hit the paper. Well done, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> that is the dark horse today, called Bertus. Bertus is a pioneer with that style of his. Awesome, good and grip and hamster. Your entire life, maybe? And over there we've got Wesley and company. Scoring in HFT is very simplistic. One point if the target drops, zero if you hit the faceplate or has no metal involved, which is a bit of a dilemma and you get a naught also known as an egg. Time for the formalities with the safety briefing and then the allocation of the lanes and who the shooting partner for the day will be. After this, we're going to go out onto the field itself, onto the, the course where we have a whistle to start the event. One whistle means the course is closed. Two whistles means that you can go ahead and shoot. The course is open. And off we go to our respected lanes to start the shoot. Right, so our first two targets. We've got a positional to start with, which is quite tricky. And the second one is a little meerkat up a tree. Or a ground squirrel or whatever you want to call it. That is going to be at an elevated angle. And then our second target is between those stumps over there. And that will be a standing shot. And I'll get a better angle just now. Unlike field target, with hunter field target you're not allowed to make any adjustments to your scope after you've shot at the first target. And this is what makes hunter field target a little bit more difficult because you need to judge the distance with your eyes. You're not allowed a range finder or a ruler or a measuring tape. You need to guess and range the correct distance and that is one of the big challenges. Getting that distance correct with an air rifle is cardinal. Alright, Uncle's gonna take the first shot. Going up the tree. Let's see if I can zoom in on the target. Shot, son. Nice. One down. Second one is a stander. In between the trees. Right. 
make it into a standing position. The second target is way back there in between two stumps. Very creative of the course builders. Now this is the much more difficult shot. That will be a zero on scorecard. Extremely tough these positionals. Success number Lane 12. This is the ground eye view level. Now where's the target? Uh, slightly to the right there. There we go. There's a tortoise in the shade. And then the left hand one I actually have to go and lie down from the shooting position. Let's see if I can find this target. From the shooting position there is a crow that we need to clop. And 13. It's got an extremely, extremely difficult ranging with the eye because both targets are in the shade. So it makes ranging so, so, so difficult. That's the first one there. And this damn camera doesn't want to focus where I want it to focus. And the second one is even further back. There. Let's see what's up. Shot. Nikis. Great first shot. We th I think that distance around about 35 meters. It's close to 39 yards. The second one is even further. Let's see if you can drop this one. I'm on 85 times zoom on the camera, just to give you an indication of distance. Oh, my greatness. Right, let's zoom out, give you guys a perception. Okay. Right. I'm just trying to judge the distance. I'm standing close to the shooting pin. And our second one, second shot is a kneeler. And that is the sign that we use for a kneeler in HFT. Right. Coolio, got that one. Okay, now, kneeler. Oh, yes. Drag a guy sneller to buy three kills on us. And this is an interesting pillar. As you can see, the angle is into a tree. Let me see if I can find. Shot. What a shot. Nikis. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I finally got two in a row.
Sure thing. Two for two. After the shoot, everybody quickly assisted, broke the course down in record time. Time for the marshals to quickly add up the scores to see if there's any shootouts. Today we didn't have shootouts and they could finish up quickly. Check on count normal day. Sunday it's worse. <laughs> Thanks for watching and enjoying the HFT with us. Please come and join the shoot. Come and see what it's all about. You're more than welcome. That's all, folks.